Hi everyone, it's Dr. Dan. I am back today to do our three-point bending testing of chicken bone. And so the chicken bone is actually a little bit easier to deal with than the tendons because we don't have to do much measuring at all, right? We are estimating the effective bending modulus. Um, and so we could technically measure the cross-sectional area of bone, um, but we don't really care about that. We care about the product of E times I, not necessarily just E and I separately. And it's a good thing too, because the cross-section of the bone is not consistent. It's a little bit changing. So we're making some assumptions here that might not exactly apply, um, but we're gonna do our best, right? And we're gonna try to go ahead and compare the chicken uh, bone versus some other materials I have out for us. And so the first thing we have to do, just like when we were testing tendons, is to set up our method. And so we're gonna set up a method that is going to be basically compression um, but it's going to be compression into three-point bending. So we're going to go to method, and we're going to say new method, and we're going to want to do a compression method. Okay, and it's very similar to before, like Blue Hill has all this stuff set up so we can automatically create our output if we wanted, but we want to be able to analyze our own data. So all we need is to control it and get the raw data out. So we're going to skip straight to control, and so just like before, we have some sort of ramp we want to apply, right? We're going to move it according to some distance over at some speed. And so, uh, again, just thinking about how much, how fast we want to apply the ramp is probably important. And so I think if we think about the size of our samples, right? All our synthetic samples are uh, half inch diameter. Our bone, I haven't measured it, but it's probably even half of that, so maybe a quarter inch diameter. And so if you just think in that, in that terms, like if we bent it a full diameter, that would be a ton of bending. And if you'll remember from our euler bernoulli beam bending theory, technically that's only valid for infinitesimal, just very small bending. Okay, so we don't wanna bend very much. We just wanna bend a little. So just kind of based on that, if we're thinking a quarter inch, you know, 25 millimeters is an inch about, so a quarter of that is like six-ish. So even, we don't want to even get that. We want anywhere near that. So I'm thinking like one millimeter of bending is gonna be plenty, right? Because all we need is we're just fitting that linear part of the curve. So I think one millimeter of bending over a minute, that sounds pretty good. The trick here is that if we put one millimeter minute in extension, it will raise the thing up I can't, and for some reason, it doesn't like me to put negative one. Uh, it says it's outside the range. It needs to be set to something zero or bigger. Okay, so instead of extension, we actually have to say compressive extension. And that way, when we put one millimeter per minute in here, it means pressing down. Okay, and that's all we're gonna do. We're just gonna go and press down until we get to the end of the test. Um, so this first one is for breaking. I don't think we'll get there, but I'll go ahead and leave it on there. Um, the other criteria we always want to have is our load, right? So I'm going to put load, um, again, we want to protect the load cell with this load. So if you remember in the tension testing, the load cell was rated to hundred newtons. So we wanted to stop it at 80 newtons. Okay. And that way it would get nowhere near hundred. So this load cell on our three point bending machine is actually 5,000 newtons. So we wanna make sure it gets nowhere near that. So we're gonna stick 4,000 Newtons as our load limit. Now this is compression. If you remember, I did a little test on the tension. Uh, and so positive was a tension load. And so negative is gonna be a compression load on here. So if I say, if we reach negative 4,000 Newtons, we wanna stop the test. Okay, our final criteria is how far we wanna move. And like I said, I think one millimeter was about as far as we wanted to move. Um, so we can say, you know, compressive extension of one millimeter. So that, that would take, oops, I unclicked it. That would take a minute to get there if we got to one millimeter before we get to the load that breaks it. Okay, and so that's all we need to do for that. Again, the next thing I need to do is raw data. So I just want time extension load. So my output here is export raw data. Make sure it's in a CSV file. And we're done. Right, all I need to do is control, make sure we export to CSV, save and close. I'm gonna just call this um, three-point bending. 
now that I've set up my method, just like I do with tension, I want to test and make sure it works before I ruin my biological samples. So I'm going to use one of my synthetic samples. I think I'll use the steel, um, stainless steels. It's you know it's going to be the one of the strongest ones, and so I don't have to worry about it breaking. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and lower load this on here. And what I'm going to do is make sure it's in there pretty tightly. Um, it is going to add some load, but like this initial load is not something we're really concerned about, right? We just care about that linear region um, in, our, in our load, load. We just care about the linear region um, in our load versus extension that we can analyze the data. Okay, so I have it loaded in there. Um, one thing I will note is that uh, we have these posts set at the 15 centimeter mark. So that means the distance between these is 15 centimeters. So our L is 15 or 150 millimeters because you'll have to do it in millimeters to do the math right. So we can go ahead and test. I'm going to use my three-point bending method test I just made. Okay, this is actually my fourth stainless steel sample. I've already tested a couple to make sure they would work, um, but I wanted to show you one uh, just to prove to you that it also worked. Okay, so now I just want to go ahead and, like again, make sure this is in here well. I'm going to reset the gauge length, balance the load cell to zero, so we start out at zero, zero. And we'll go ahead and start the test. So this one's a little different because you can see the graph is going negative extension and negative load, which is what we expect. We're expecting that compression load. Whereas the tension graph drew up the other way in the first quadrant, this is drawing down into the third quadrant. And so this is working, like when I did this, I'm noticing it's working pretty good. I'm about a half millimeter now. It's about a thousand newtons. So I feel pretty good. It's not gonna get to that load cell limit um, when we get to one full millimeter. So I think a millimeter is a good uh, number to go to. Okay, we're done, that worked well. Again, I would check and make sure that this data is output in CSV format, and so I've already done that and it works. Um, so we're good here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and test all the other materials I have for you guys to analyze and send you the data, but I'm not gonna record the videos of that. I will record the video of uh, testing the bone samples because they'll be a little bit different. Uh, we're gonna have to set the posts much closer together for those. But I'll show you that when I'm done testing all the other samples. Right, now it's time for us to test the bone. So I've got everything set up. It's really the same setup I have been doing for the previous, all the previous materials. So what I need to do though is move uh, these posts in because my bone segments are much smaller. My shortest one is somewhere in the 35-ish millimeters. So if I, I'm gonna try to move these into like 30 millimeters. Again, for the bone, this is gonna be a little less reliable because the shape of the bone isn't consistent. Okay, for those beams, it was a very consistent half inch diameter rod. It's easy to calculate uh, things from that didn't change. For the bone, we're just going to make some assumptions that's similar to a rod, but it's not going to be. Okay, so for the bone then, my L is going to be three centimeters or 30 millimeters. Whereas in, for my other ones, the L was going to be 15 centimeters. And so I think we're still in a decent range. Our, you know, compression over, or L over our amount of compression ratio, we're still only compressing one millimeter, so it's still 30 to one. So I think we're still in a good range to make uh, the approximation we're gonna make with the Bernoulli bending equation. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and load up a bone on here. Again, I could try to measure this. It, it doesn't make much sense to me to try to bother measuring it um, because it's just, it's not a circular cross section at all. 
So I'm going to lower the the sample down. I'm watching my load on the load cell. And when it becomes just slightly negative, I'm going to feel it. Yeah, it feels like the bone is in there. Our load is just negative 13. That's fine, right? We're just looking for this linear region between uh, displacement and load. So I'm going to go ahead and reset, balance the load cell, reset my gauge length, and go ahead and run our test. Okay, and so we're done with this bone. I think we can see from this test that uh, it's a little less linear than our other materials. We certainly have a linear region in here, but it looks like it starts bending a little flatter down at the end. So that's interesting. But remember, we're really interested in this linear region uh, for bone bending. Okay, I'm gonna run the other three samples just the same, uh, and then give you the guys the results to analyze.